Thank you, Georg. Yeah, I was still signed in from the app system work group yesterday. Okay. All right, so welcome everyone to the January 26th edition of Chaos Weekly Meeting, Weekly Hangout. So we're glad you're here to hang out with us and chat about stuff that's going on in chaos. Um, we have a pretty light agenda, so if you have things that you've wanted to bring up and you haven't yet, feel free to add that on there. If you need the minutes, we can drop that in again, but I think everybody has been in here since we dropped them last time. So just check the chat. And if you can add your name, that would be fantastic. Looks like everyone's doing that. Uh, let us know how you're doing. Um, besides being buried in snow, <laughs> I hope everyone is doing all right today. Um, all right, so let's just jump right in. The first item we have on there is um, that we added a new feature to our newsletter. If you're not receiving that, then you absolutely should join the mailing list because they're so exciting and so they wonderful. Are. They are. I look forward <laughs> to them every week. <laughs> I'm sure. I, um, I do, actually. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. So we added um, a small feature that hopefully we can do on a semi-regular basis, um, and that is to offer some volunteer opportunities for people who are looking to get involved in a specific way. Um, and we're going to try to basically outline what's needed, how much time it will take, and what skills are needed as well. So um, after we sent one out yesterday, we had a couple of people already volunteer. So that one's been filled and we have an extra person who's ready to volunteer for the next thing. So that was really good. I was surprised that it worked so well. That, <laughs> so, that, really, that was surprisingly fast. I thought so yeah, too. Right? So great um, idea. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna tweet those as well. And so I think that one of them came from the tweet as well. So, um, so big, huge thank you to Anita who has been involved in, in a few different ways with chaos, but she reached out to um, specifically volunteer to help with the generating of the community reports on the cauldron side. So um, huge shout out to her. Thank you, thank you to Anita. Um, and if you know anyone who um, anyone who's involved in the project that's on here today, if you have a specific thing in mind that you are looking for help with, let me know. And um, there's also a form uh, that I have that I can I can drop in here too maybe if I'm I'm not that quick um, but there is a form that you can fill out that just kind of outlines you know asks you for the information about the volunteer opportunity or if you have someone that you know has reached out to you personally and said hey I want to get involved in in chaos but I don't know how or where to start um, you can also let me know that because I'm also keeping track of the people who have stepped up and things they might be interested in so if something comes up in the future I can reach out to them directly as well. So we'll just try to be a little more coordinated and deliberate with our efforts and keeping everybody involved and, and all that. So does anybody have any questions or comments about that? Suggestions, ideas? It's awesome. awesome. It was great. We, we welcome our auger. We welcome anyone that wants to volunteer to do the auger part of the reports. It will be motivating to me to show someone else how to do this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. Well, we will move along. Uh, then. So, note on the newsletter, kind of a celebration of the work that is being done every week, because while we are in the trenches doing the work, it's sometimes difficult to see all the progress we are making. So that's another reason why I love the newsletters. Yeah, Good, I'm really, glad to hear that. Great, yeah, it's a great source for recognizing all of everyone's work. It's a great gear. And just as a side note, if anyone has stuff they want me to add in there, just let me know. Happy to add whatever needs to be added. So just let me know. I'm just at Elizabeth at chaos.community. You're supposed to add Twinkies, apparently. Twinkies. <laughs> this is Twinkles. That's oh, Twinkles. Oh. Twinkles. Oh, this I want is Twinkies. Twinkles. Somehow send me Twinkies. <laughs> you haven't gone to enough of like the nonprofit community groups because one of the things that they'll do is when they're having like the the unconferencing kind of things instead of distracting and stuff they'll do this which is like yay and that way you don't have to come off mute and do all this other kind of stuff actually we should put a, a recipe for matt broberg in there for some noodles or something like that and i can <laughs> that has really what 
my internet has become is mostly noodle recipes. And <laughs> my my internet know. feed is entirely Bernie in a folding chair, but <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty satisfying too. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Sorry if my dogs bark. I think we just got a delivery. So they're keeping our household safe as they do. Um, all right, so let's move on to mentorship. We are going to be participating in the Google Summer of Code. I, I know we talked about this a little bit last time, um, but we are definitely going to do that on a much smaller scale than last year, um, just because everyone's pretty busy. So, um, but we are going to be doing that, I think, maybe one to two projects per for each of those things. Um, and Georg and Sean are going to be um, coordinating all of those efforts. So Georg's going to show me the ropes and I'm going to do the work. Oh, and unless Georg Sounds like a good work. division of labor. Yeah, because I, I think, I, I, you know, you've done it before and know all the Google buttons to push. And I think that will be helpful to have you as a advisor to make sure I know what I'm supposed to do. I feel not, like that I, not that I can't read, but... Oftentimes I don't. <laughs> I feel like we have a document somewhere with all the information we filled in last year so we can copy paste a lot of work. Maybe I'll yeah. have that document. <laughs> That's always a good thing when you can look back to your past self and give a little thank you because you've written stuff down. I'm a huge documentation. Like I write everything down, Every, everything I write down because I know I'll just forget. And so I, yeah, I'm glad that you did that too, Georg. <laughs> it makes it life easier this to, this year. Yeah, the conversation we should have is in the projects what we want students to be working on. So we need to fill in list of project ideas and describe them, figure out how much effort they are. Google Summer of Code is looking different this year from the years before because they changed the format. Um, so we'll have to make sure the projects align with the expectations. I think it's a shorter time frame, isn't it? Yeah, that part I knew. Yep. Smaller projects. Awesome. I'm glad you're participating again, because I think it, it's a really great thing for us and for the students as well. So thank you guys for stepping up there and making that happen. Hey, um, Eric, I, a, a, sorry, a stupid question okay. on <clears throat> smaller projects is, does that impact the length of the internship at all? Or like, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously I haven't kept up with how I think so. GSOC yeah. has evolved, but okay. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Like maybe they're trying to get more people through the program. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure. I don't know if it affects yeah. the stipend too. You know, like the mm -hmm. if it's two thirds money. Shorter. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. <clears throat> yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I like I said, I haven't I haven't kept up on it, but that's actually kind of interesting. They're trying to make the project smaller. But, yeah, I yeah, I don't I don't have no idea what the motivations are. I know last summer there was because of COVID, a lot of my students in India were in exams for a couple of weeks of the Google Summer of Code period. So there's just adaptations you we had to make, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe they so learned the, a few things from that. The coding period is now June 7th to August 16th. So uh, only four two weeks months. shorter. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we'll look into it um and then we'll get to it out but to be honest knowing you know the high schooler schedule that actually matches up to how short the summers are becoming for a lot of them and it's going to be even worse this year with covid so um it makes sense and i think well, in the past thanks. these were full-time hours a week I think this year they want only 20 hours a week because they know people have a lot going on, preparing for exams, getting ready for their job hunt, whatever, taking care of their family. Right. Cool. 
Right. Well, thanks. I see here that um, I'm guessing Matt G wrote in here about outreachy. Yes, okay. Yeah, so I, I think we should, I don't have the form in front of me, but Elizabeth, maybe you and I can coordinate um, to participate in outreachy. We don't have, I think we mentioned this last time, we don't have the funds, but we can mention that in the application um, because they get external support as well to support projects. And so I think it makes a lot of sense to still apply and just indicate that we don't have the funds ourselves and we would love support. And then I did hear back from uh, Sage. So Elizabeth, if you want to join for the outreach, so there's um, oh, where is it? The um, it's called a chat with interns. So it's the new interns who are looking to participate in the outreachy program, or maybe even past interns, and they want to um, set up a session where maybe one to three interns can speak with a person to learn about what it means to make a living in the open source world. And so that's, it's really pretty informal and um, I'm gonna participate in it and maybe you can too, Elizabeth. I think she had also suggested that you would have like your own group of folks. You know what I mean? Like we wouldn't do it together that maybe having two, two people there might be kind of intimidating, so. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. I mean, you are pretty intimidating anyway, Matt. I so. Overwhelmingly <laughs> so. I strive. Um, yeah, no, um, that's absolutely fine. I'm happy to do it. And I'm glad that I can. Um, so yeah, and you and I can get together on the outreachy application as well, like mm -hmm. you said. Do you happen to know off the top of your head when, uh, when it's due? No. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Easy enough. All right, so we'll take that. We can discuss that offline. Um, out of band or whatever they call that. I don't know, whatever. Not in Bowling here. Alley. Yeah. Um, I was hoping Matt Snell would be here. He is not, but um, he did have some exciting news. So I'll just share on his behalf and on behalf of the um, DNI badging. Do we have anyone here that's been in? Uh, really think so okay um but anyway uh so the dni badging just issued their second gold badge to an event so that's very exciting we just tweeted about that um the it was dpdk which is a linux event i believe and in the asia i think it's over in asia so um of course virtual but um so yeah congratulations to them and congratulations to matt snell and the whole dni badging team they are doing really awesome work uh it's so cool to go look at those threads where people apply and just to see the back and forth and the attention and the time and energy that it's taking on both parties to make it happen. It's really cool. So if you haven't taken a look at that, um, it's interesting. You might want to do that. Uh, it's, it's just a very neat. It, it's clearly something that people care about and I'm really happy that Matt Snell is leading that charge because he cares about this stuff a lot and his whole team cares about it. So um, so just congratulations to them for keeping on. We still do meet, um, I think it's at uh, an hour before this meeting to talk about outreach for that program. So if anyone has ideas about how we can help spread the word or get it out there even more, um, you can join that meeting or pass, the, pass any ideas you have along to Matt Snell because um, they're just doing really, really great work. So big shout out to them. Were you in that meeting earlier today? I was. I was, yeah. Did, uh, did I miss that one? Is there any kind of update on? I know that they had, they're moving forward with some projects. Has there been any update on that? I think they're still working with um, Salona's team at the IEEESA. They uh, have a few members that participate in that meeting. So I know that there's been some back and forth um, of how they, they can help us spread the word as well. So, um, but yeah, I think yes, the our marketing group is very in on that right now. <laughs> yeah, so big shout out to them too. Yeah, so she's actually trying to figure out how we're going to market them, where they're going to go, what, and and we're doing a lot of badging stuff. Not so we want to do the events one most stuff, but we're also looking at a lot of other stuff on badging. So they're kind of putting together a larger scope in regards to that because we do want to recruit volunteers who want to talk about badging events, badging individuals, and badging projects. And so it's it's a big thing that they're trying to roll up right now. So it may take a little while, um, but yes. Cool. 
Um, and then I also put a link in there for Foss Backstage. If you just click it, and then you'll see the DNI Gold badge on there. It's just <laughs> kind of nice to see it. <laughs> click it or take it. That's super exciting. I'm actually giving a talk there. Are you? That's awesome. Yeah. It's not on metrics. It's on governance and leadership. But it's okay. I was excited to see. <clears throat> excuse me. I was excited to see the badge. I like that idea, Georg, that he's dropped into the minutes about doing a um, chaos cast episode with one of the gold badge, because that would like kind of bring it back around. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yep. I would love to have a conversation with them and the with both sides of the badge, talking about the process and how it went and the experience, so that anyone else who is interested in the badge as an event organizer can hear from this experience and see what value we provide. Ideally from an event organizer who already finished the event and maybe has feedback on how participants may have noticed, that would be ideal. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea. I love that. And I think it would be really interesting to a lot of people out in our community as well. So, um, all right, let's move on. So unless anybody has any other questions, comments? No, okay. Um, so a bunch of community handbook work is the next item on here. What is going on here? That's what someone wrote, and I don't know who wrote it, so I will let I them wrote it because I'm, I'm looking at you, Georg. So, <laughs> the, an influx of issues that's all. I just trying to get some clarity on it. Yeah, there's no real reason, it just happens to be something that I looked at and was like, oh, we can improve it here. The what kicked it off was what uh, Elizabeth was doing with the new section in the newsletter to ask for help. And so we needed a clearly defined process and steps that someone could follow. And so I wrote that in the handbook and then I was like, ooh, improve this, we can improve that. And Jess Grutt is still very involved. She's the Google Season of Docs um, technical writer who worked with us. And so, yeah, there was just a lot of back and forth because he's engaged and I'm engaged and somehow we are just step-by-step step improving. You just started it. pulling out the thread and one thing kind of led to another. Okay. All right, cool. Well, I, have to, I have to say real quick, um, I think that this is perfect for us referencing on the SA Open Platform as a guide. So I'd like to like figure out how we can like because um, our, our um, DEI group is getting, not DIE group, DEI, <laughs> diversity, mm -hmm. equality, and inclusion, um, has been talking about some of those sort of things. And so this would be something good to drop over with them because we're trying to create these best practices and, go, and we're very big on citation. And so that would be a cool thing for us to be able to reference. What was and your can... What was the... The, Say again. What was the thought here? The thought here, here is under our community advisory group, we have a diversity, equality, and inclusion group. And one of the main things that these advisory groups are going and doing is gathering as many best practices as they can um, and referencing those. And so this would be something really cool for us to be, for, for that group to be able to reference. This is to go, oh, over here at Chaos, they're going through and doing these things. And so we can go in and reference those. Gotcha. And so I think that would be a, a really good resource for that group. Okay. So thank you. Yes. And we'll advertise it what, too after we do that. Would having a community hand be interesting as well? Yes. Okay, that is something yeah. we can talk to Jessica about. I know he had this idea of taking his experience from work chaos through Google Season of Dark and applying it to other home source communities. So we should talk to him. Yes, awesome. Very exciting. I love finding golden nuggets like that. It's like, ah, okay, that's awesome. Because this is a group I know is always doing things right. <laughs> Maybe a little biased here, but 
Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We like to think of ourselves that way. Well, my team has been learning, you know, I know they're participating in a lot of these calls, but they've been learning so much. Like they came back and they're like, in chaos, they're doing this. Can we do this now? And I'm like, yes, 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 we can. But in chaos, they're doing, you know, so they're very, I, and that's one of the reasons I asked for them to engage too, is I'm like, go see, you know, this is a really well-run group. Go see how all this is going. And they're, and they're just constantly bringing things back and, and they love working with y'all. So, you know, yay. Right on. Learning by doing. <laughs> It's awesome. Thank you, Salona. That was a very highly paid compliment. Jeez. <laughs> we love that. Um, okay, so uh, just a reminder to everyone, this is the last week of um, metrics work before the freeze. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but- You're not um, wrong. Awesome. I love that. I love that when I get it right. Uh, so this is the last week. So if you have an interest in bringing some metrics in for a landing, uh, I put a reminder of all the meetings this week. Um, so I think that we'll be finishing up whatever is kind of outstanding and can almost be released. We did a we did an awesome job in uh, common. Was that common? That was common. We, we pushed out two metrics last week. So, you know, not to brag, but... I mean, that was pretty rad. So. I should have meeting conflicts more often because y'all are way more productive <laughs> when I'm not there. Not true. <laughs> no, absolutely not true. We just really just like finalized all the work that had already been done. So um, it was funny. Actually, one, of, one of the metrics, oh, the, the last, the last like comment on it was I think the day before the election, you know, or like the week before the election. And then oh, God. it just, <laughs> it just went silent for two months. And we're like, Wonder why <laughs> we're busy. So we got that out. Um, the metric was a burstiness of activity. Do you remember? So that was one that had Georg had kind of done a push on it right before the right before that week. And um, anyway, there really wasn't much to do, so we just spent the time in common common meeting, kind of wrapping that one up. So. Awesome. Thank you. And the other one was uh, one that Daniel had actually opened up for us. So um, we brought that in for a landing as well. So thank you to Daniel for opening that can of worms originally. Um, so yeah, anyway, so tomorrow um, there's the Asia Pacific group and evolution and also DNI, of course. And then Thursday is value. So if you have time, energy, want to participate in any of those, we would love to have you. Um, speaking of value, I would, I don't know, Matt B, do you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. A uh, real quick update that I am going to be taking a step back from leading those meetings. Um, I just have to switch my schedule around quite a bit and I won't be able to be the lead maintainer for value going forward. Um, give uh, a few people a heads up and I'm sure we'll, we'll find somebody who's a regular to take over, but, uh, yeah, thank you all. I'll still be poking around and being a member of this chaos crew for sure. But um, it's got a new year, new schedule type vibe at the moment and uh, really appreciate all you. Thanks, Matt. I have to ask, is that a picture of a spaceman walking inside of your room behind you? Absolutely. There's actually two of them. With, okay. uh, recurring... Sorry, I was completely distracted from your Sean, otherwise you distracted? stunning Never. face. That doesn't yeah, make sense. it's uh, I don't know it's unusual, <laughs> isn't it? Um, yeah, they're the uh, the posters from All Things Open, which okay. they produce once a year when the conference happens, and I volunteer for it, and so I tend to get to bring one home. It's pretty that cool. kind of poster, I'll start volunteering for that. There you go. Maybe that's our next uh, scale out phase. Whoever takes over value will get a poster. Not necessarily from me, but probably from Georg. Poster of Matt, Matt German pretty shoveling snow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that might be a nice giveaway for our upcoming Chaos Cons next year. Honestly, yeah, they um, were totally down a different thread, but I'm into it. Uh, the, the team at All Things Open, Todd, um, oh man, Lewis. Uh, Lewis. He, yeah, he works with a local like screen printer in the Raleigh area who designs it for him. And uh, I've heard of similar for a couple other projects. The team at Grafana used to do that for Grafanacon too. 
it's it's kind of a cool it's an incredibly unique and beautiful giveaway um so i'm i'm into it well matt thank you for all your work so yeah you bet yeah <laughs> thank you very much appreciate it was, it was great having you as a maintainer yeah, 100%, Matt. You've done a fantastic job. We really appreciate everything that you've done and look forward to seeing you around because, you know, once you're in, you can you can never leave. So, yeah. <laughs> I definitely have that mafia feel here. That's perfect. Right. <laughs> right. That's what we're going for. So, it good works. on us. <laughs> I, think so. I was wondering, maybe we could put that, in, <clears throat> excuse me, as a volunteer opportunity in the newsletter to help, to help you know, kind of lead that group and something could be said like, you know, of course we'll help you, <laughs> which is, you know, throw you in on day one and um, but it might be something to think about. I can volunteer for that because I have been attending it from day one. So all right, well never mind. Done. Awesome. <laughs> See what happens you just put it in the newsletter and it's immediately taken care of. So <laughs> thank you, Vinod. Thank you. Vinod's always willing to step in. Thank you. All right, um, so let's move on. We have one more thing to talk about. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that it was Sean that put this in here about the Augur hackathon. Yeah, uh, we, so I mentioned last time that instead of having an hour meeting, we'd like to engage people who are really interested in learning more about the technology part of Augur and actually learning how to use it and develop their own metrics in it. and. So we're going to do these five hour hackathons every other Saturday morning early in the, in the Midwest, but I'm an early riser, not a sleeper. So works for me. And that uh, opens it up for our, anybody in Europe who wants to participate. I'll be posting topics or, or potential focus areas, but whoever shows up gets to drive the agenda and uh, it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. Um, I think there, there are some features available in my chaos version of Zoom that I have not yet fully explored, but look like they have potential for things like hackathons that, that are not in the stock version of Zoom that I have at my university. So we're going to figure this out and have some fun. Do you, are you can, I guess I would have a concern about Saturdays. Some people kind of have hard lines on no work on the weekends. Yeah. Some people have hard lines about no calls on Fridays. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, so I'm trying to I'm trying to draw the interest of, of people who have multiple different kinds of schedules. Um, I'm not committed to Saturdays. Um, I'm open to other suggestions if there are days that you think would be better. I, I, I seriously, I don't. I didn't know it for a large block of time. I didn't know what day other than Monday, Friday, or uh, a Saturday would work because otherwise I'm going to, you know, step on a bunch of chaos meetings. No, I mean, I, the point's well made. So um, yeah, Friday is the other alternative. Yeah. I just, I like to use Friday for my own personal writing, you know, um, yeah, I was going to throw it out there like, you know, it's outside of the work week, which could actually work quite well for some people trying to contribute to open source who aren't paid to do so during their work okay. week. Yep, so, I mean, too. so if you're will, if it's not a schedule conflict for you, Sean, like it would be yeah. cool to see if people show. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say this. I'll com I'm committing to, let's say, four, four of them and we'll see what kind of traction we get and we'll pivot if after four, it's just me, myself, and I sitting in my lovely bunker. Um. <laughs> but I think, I mean, I think, you know, given it, you know, whatever day it is, it's Saturday, let's try it. And if it doesn't work, I'll try, probably try Mondays, um, which is kind of also, I mean, it's like, there's just not a good day to take up that amount of time, but I think it's a better way to, at least try to get more people engaged in the software side of chaos. Cool. It's it's worth taking it's worth taking the shot from half court. <laughs> and Sean, I can help you um, get the word out about that as well, and like how people yes. can. So yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. 
So uh, again, you and awesome. I can take this, like that piece of it, take it offline. Off, yeah, one thing, out. one thing I don't know is if I should sort of promote a structured, here's what we're going to focus on agenda. I think maybe opening my thoughts were to open with an hour of something. Here's what we're going to do for the first hour. Um, and here's what we'll do for the last hour. And then there's three hours of we'll work on what you want to work on. I mean, so I, I, I'm extremely open to, you know, com a completely open structure probably isn't appealing, but if you know you're going to get a couple of things out of it, I think that might be more appealing. I don't know. We're half court shot here. Yeah, yeah, I'd recommend setting some expectation, like yeah. uh, saying it, it's an open space, but like you will, if you show up, you will learn X or yeah. participate in Y is tends to help drive traffic. Total unknowns is pretty uninviting to a lot of people. Yeah, I think I think what I, I'll do is I'll I'll reach out to Elizabeth and ask me talk to her for 20 minutes or half an hour. And because I think she knows what she's doing when it comes to making things like this work um, more, more than I do. Well, we'll do our best for sure. Yeah. We'll sort it all out. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, and I, I'm a big fan of like experimentation with this yeah. kind of stuff. Like you said, just iterating and trying to see what works and what sticks and what doesn't. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's exciting. I think it's a great idea. And I, I'm really excited to see how it goes and to uh, kind of put our heads together on that for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any, oh, looks like we're at the end. Of the agenda. Look at that. We got 15 minutes left. What else is left to talk about? Who wants to bring something up? I had a metric proposal that I thought was good for the risk working group. The bus a, factor. Did you say a trick proposal? A metric. Oh, metric. Okay. I missed the first, <laughs> I missed the first part of that somehow. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll be all clowns now. Yeah. The, I'm afraid of clowns, just so you know. <laughs> the bus factor is um, a metric that is very well known that a lot of people talk about, and we just don't have it in our catalog. So there's a proposal, and as we are getting up to the feature freeze, I would ask someone in the risk group to maybe consider it for the upcoming release. I am. Um... I mean, I wrote elephant factor and, but I mean, obviously bus factor is a very simple derivative of that. I mean, it's actually the simpler of the two metrics to put together. So um, I would simply copy the work from elephant factor um, and change the names and some of the formulas and make it bus factor. Um, Great minds it, think alike, Sean. That's exactly yeah. what I did. <laughs> oh, you've already, have you already done it, Georg? Yeah, the proposal oh. is in there. Oh, okay. So I don't think that the risk group is meeting before the metrics freeze. Is that no, right? but um, I will circulate this uh, as a proposal to the to the to the, to the risk yeah. group right now. Um, I have a follow. I have, I did a survey. Hopefully, any of you interested in the risk working group filled out the survey for a time to meet. Um, I'll take a look at that here shortly. And then I'll include this. Thanks for doing that. Gear. Awful. Yeah, really seriously awesome. Yeah, that would be really cool if we could get it out there asynchronously then this week that'd be awesome that's i don't see why that would be a problem i think that would be the first metric we release without meeting and talking about it i think so too laying the groundwork for future async work uh, I, I love it yeah i i think risk is yeah i think we may have done this really early on a couple summers ago but uh yeah it doesn't happen that often. Well, that was an unexpected burst of productivity at the end of the meeting. Thank you, Georg. <laughs> what no else worries. do we have? What other problems can we solve in 12 minutes? Another topic that's on my mind 
all times is ideas for our podcast. Right now, we don't have anything in the pipeline. We have episodes until the end of February. So I'm looking for ideas that we can record during February to be released. So if anyone knows of metrics work somewhere or some tape they have seen, please let me know. We'll do. I'll just say that we did a podcast this Monday with Stefka and Ivana from VMware. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> really, it was, I mean, I think we ended the podcast and I had maybe a thousand more questions that I could have asked. So it was just great. I talked to Stefka afterwards. They had a really good time. They really enjoyed it. It was so good. Last week, we recorded an episode with Sophia Vargas from Google, which was also an excellent episode. Yeah, that was also a lot of fun. I liked doing the podcast. So Gamer, yeah, I haven't done one in a while. For people to be on the podcast, did, is there a document that you would want to capture names or? Yeah, wanna... just shoot me an email. I'll manage the documents. Okay. Awesome. Anything else anybody wants to bring up? I don't think so. Maybe. Great. I think we're good. All right. Well, you all get 10 minutes back. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Talk to you later. Have a super day, everybody. See you. Bye. Thanks again Take care. for coming. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.